this is the first in our series of conversations around the job market and career market for cybersecurity professionals. And it is changing much faster, like everything else changing faster than it has been in the last few years. And so our approach is to really interview people that have a good perspective on what's going on. And today, my special guest is Jason Black, who is a Chief Information Security Officer at Tailored Brands. He's been a colleague and friend for about at least 13 years. So welcome to our first interview, Jason. Thank you, Fred. And so what we want to talk about is your perspective on what's going on in the job market. What, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you see as hot trends and things students should know about? Because all of our students are in our master's degree program. It takes like a couple of years to get this degree. So I'm trying to help them figure out what what sorts of things will be important, you know, not necessarily this minute, but in the future. And so I just, one thing I wonder about are the different kinds of roles that are out there in security. What, you know, do you see some roles becoming less important, other roles becoming more important? What kind of are the sort of big picture trends that you see in, in information security roles? So that, that's a great question, Fred. I, I actually think that uh, all of the roles we see today are very important. And, and the reason I say that is because, you know, just to use an old cliche, um, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Yeah. And, and if, if you think of that link, that chain, um, that, that safety net, um, you know, every, every different security type of security role has a part to play in, in, in what we do today. Um, I think, I think the challenge we see today is, is, is uh, doing all of those roles as well as we can and with a level of maturity and, and with business alignment. So as, as I look at um, a traditional security team from my own perspective, yep. I can see three or four different types of roles. Um, you have a kind of a security operations type focus, uh, which is going to be looking at the logging and monitoring and just looking at all information sources to see if they can, um, you know, spot something bad going on or something unauthorized or inappropriate happening and, and to identify risks and threats uh, before they impact the company. So that's, that's kind of very much a monitoring role. Um, and that's important because a lot of things you may see in that monitoring role could be, uh, shall we say, bad hygiene within your environment. It may not be malicious, but bad hygiene mm -hmm. can, can provide an opening um, for a malicious actor coming in. So it's a very crucial role, although uh, for somebody with, with, with not the right mindset it could be a very boring role because it's, it's very repetitive and it's almost looking for a needle in a needle stack. Um, kind of... Uh, you know, in addition to that, you have probably a more traditional uh, security engineering type role, um, which is all about helping. It's, it's a little bit more of a technical focus. It's about building systems in a secure manner, in a way that, so you could be building a system that, that is part of the security ecosystem. So you may be building firewalls um, and stuff like that. So, so you want to make sure that they are configured and built and designed in order to maximize your, you know, your protection, your risk mitigation and your controls. Uh, but in addition, uh, as, as, as the business is, is building other systems, uh, they have other business requirements. We also play a consultative role in that security engineering uh, type focus to, to make sure that everything else is being built um, in, in as much as possible, a secure manner, secure and compliant manner. So that's two very distinct roles that, that have a very technical focus. And then moving on from that, you have kind of a governance compliance type focus. Uh, governance and compliance is very important still today. Uh, compliance has been important for many years. For me, good, strong governance, in addition to everything else we do, it is what sets us apart from, from you know, the average player. It's what helps us to mature. It, it becomes that continuous improvement cycle. It becomes a, a matter of trust but verify to make sure we are doing the right things and to make sure we're keeping up with that moving target that, that may require us to do something a little different from what we did yesterday. Uh, and, then, and then I think a fourth kind of mindset or discipline for me, which is, kind of a huge overlap with go good governance is, is risk management. 
So from a security perspective within an IT organization, I view the security team and the role of the CISO as being responsible for the, um, the IT part of enterprise risk management because everything else we do, everything else we do that you consider part of a traditional security role, um, the risk management is what puts it in, in, in a business context and allows you to be business aligned, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you. That's a very good description of the sort of four areas. I like your description of governance as being responsible for continuous improvement. I think, you know, a lot of people just say, okay, governance, we're going to do it for compliance reasons. We have to do it. But the whole continuous improvement is so critical. And I <clears throat> like your description of um, looking for needles in needle stacks for monitoring. That's yeah. <laughs> much harder than finding needles in haystacks, right? That's easy. That's a piece of cake. Yeah, you can use a metal detector if you're just looking for a needle <laughs> in a haystack. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Now, let me just, I think that's very good. What about, um, one of the things we're trying to do in our program is uh, focus on software-related security issues and cloud security-related issues. What kinds of new technologies, you know, those or others, do you see that security professionals should be aware of, you know, that they, they may need to protect because the business is using them, or they may need to learn more about them to actually use them in, in, in you know, fulfilling security roles. Anything particular come to mind there? Um, I, I'm going to answer the question a slightly different way, maybe even dodge the question uh, <laughs> slightly, but uh, you see, I'm very transparent when I do that. Okay. Uh, I, 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 could, I could name some technologies and, and the list would potentially be completely different tomorrow. So, so as I think about that question and that challenge, for, for me, it, it becomes more of a question of, of um, how are you going to assess and mitigate the risk of, of the unknown. Uh, and, and part of that plays into uh, some, some traditional um, you know, risk, risk management type approaches in, in, in the IT world of least privileged access and apply that to your data. And, uh, but it, it also gets down to, um, in, my, in my mind, uh, a philosophy of trusted versus untrusted. So all those other technologies, all those other things the business may need to do as, as, they get, as they get further away from, from what I'm able to directly control and manage, it, it becomes less trusted and more untrusted. And, and that kind of influences the approach. The, the technology for me seems secondary when I look at it that way. So everybody wants to run around and use BYOD, which, which I actually have no problem with. I'd like to do that too. But, but what we don't see is regardless of that technology, regardless of the fact that it may be an iOS device, an Android device, or, or even a Chromebook, a Chrome OS at this point, right? Um, it doesn't really matter what that technology is if, if I don't have the underlying infrastructure that allows me to appropriately manage how you connect in and, and use the resources of the business. Um, so, so for me, it becomes a question of almost viewing those things as third party risk management or, or some, some kind of combination of third party risk management and, and IOT. It's probably our equivalent of IOT because we're not really running around in tailored brands using anything and everything. You know, we don't have connected refrigerators or anything like that uh, or connected vehicles. Uh, we're, we're a fashion company. Uh, so we have our own version of that. Um, but it does tend to lead us more to questions of trusted versus untrusted. How can I leverage this untrusted technology um, for, for business use? So is that the best? Yeah, that's a very good answer. So what I'm hearing is that the actual bits and bytes of the technology are less important to you than your your ability to assure or you know move it into your trusted environment which involves if i'm uh, understanding you right a focus on people and process is that kind of a fair statement to what what you need to do or um it's, it's i remember you were a big believer in process as yeah far. yeah yeah it, it that that's a big part of it but it's not just that there, okay. there's still that technical component okay but, but it's a matter of how do i build an environment and a control system a control environment that, that allows us to interface with those untrusted elements. 
so that people can can have the flexibility and, and be agile in, in in how they do business. And, and so there's still a huge technical component to that, um, but but it's not technology for the sake of technology. Okay. Um, maybe two more questions if you have a couple of minutes. So one, people talk a lot about certifications and there's CISSP, CISM. So do you have any thoughts on, let's say you're, uh, you know, a new, a new graduate or even somebody with 10 years work experience, you want to move into the security field. Are there specific secure, you know, certifications that you think are important or, and I know everybody says you need hands-on experience in internships and education and all these things. Are there some that you think would help people move into a security role or is it something that isn't, you know, primary when you hire a new person or transfer a person, they can get the certifications after they're in the role or what are your thoughts on that? It, it's almost a chicken and the egg question. <laughs> yes. So, you know, if, if you do not have any direct experience, I think having achieved the certifications goes a long way to, to getting your foot in the door. Okay. If, if, if you've been a, a security guy for 10, 15 years, then, then um, the certifications are really nice. Uh, they, they demonstrate uh, something, they mean something, but, but your experience at that point is probably more important for me. Um, so I think it depends upon the individual, the aptitude of the individual. That's kind of what I look for, how much experience they've had. And if they haven't had that experience, then you augment it. You, you certainly flip so that you're looking at the certifications okay. as, as a primary source of validating what they're capable of. Okay, so it can fill in some gaps that you might have in, in hands-on, so good. Yeah, yeah. My last question is, so for our student, you know, we have some students with, that are with 10, 20 years business experience, a lot of management experience, things like that. They want to add in, uh, you know, we're giving them more hands-on and sort of theoretical security background in this master's program. I guess one question would be what what other skills should they think about if they want to get to director or C-level, you know, are there what do you think of the top things they should be thinking about? I'll put you on the spot with this question. <laughs> but, you know, there are days when, when, when I feel what I do is, is, is not very specialized. It's not a specialized security person. So, sometimes you're just, just a, 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 a out and out leader. That's what you're expected to be. Okay. To be a leader of security or a leader of networking or a leader of something else. Um, so I think, I think they're important skills. I, I, I don't think companies anymore, when you're looking for, um, you know, as strong a team as possible, you're not really looking or you're no longer looking for somebody who, who can only lead a security team. If you have leadership capabilities, you have leadership capabilities. So that's, that's kind of the first part of, of that question. Um, I think, I think the other aspect is, is, if you're coming, if you have a business mindset, I, I view that as being highly beneficial at this point because, because what we have and what we've had for many years are very, very experienced and passionate technical people in security roles, which is great, and we re we really need that expertise. But but technical people sometimes view things in a very black and white way. You must do this, and you must do it this way. And um, and what you're in, uh, what you tend to miss is, is that business alignment, that business context. And so I think being able to bring some business rationale to any technical discussion is, is very important in this day and age, especially as in, in the, also in this day and age, boards of directors um, are, are being more and more held directly accountable for what happens in the company. Um, so, so they're having to be part of the cybersecurity discussion in more detail than they've ever been, which means they have to catch up pretty quickly, which, which means if, if, if you walk in and sound like a geek, then, then you're just gonna, their eyes are gonna glaze over and you're not going to be giving them uh, the guidance that they need because they won't be able to follow. So, so for me, um, it's, it's that the ability to manage a technical team and lead a technical team, but still be a business person. Very good, right. So the business mindset and then the leadership skills, but it's good to have some underlying 
tech background, right? Because you're leading a tech team, so you need to make sure they're doing the right thing. So absolutely, yeah. If 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 I if I told my team I didn't know what a firewall was, <laughs> I think they'd be laughing me out the room. <laughs> but okay. but I'm, I'm many many years past ever being asked to to configure a firewall. I think you'd be very <laughs> afraid if anybody needed me to do that now. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate your. T I think these are really good insightful comments and um if you're on the east coast please let me know we'll love to have lunch and catch up face to face so thanks again and um have a great day and nice to chat with you good speaking to you again fred take care all right bye-bye bye-bye